Hi YouTube, my name's Sam and this is my review of the Gearhead 1330 lathe from Walco. I've had this lathe for about three months now and so far I've been really impressed with its performance. Uh, I came from a 7x14 mini lathe and uh, it was a very good machine um, but I found I was starting to exceed the capabilities of that machine on a fairly regular basis. Uh, on materials like brass and aluminium the mini lathe was pretty good but I found tasks such as threading and parting, especially in materials like uh, stainless steel and titanium to be a lot more difficult than they needed to be. Um, so I decided enough was enough and it was time to look for a more capable machine and I settled on the Gearhead 13308 from Walco. One of the key features I was looking for um, when I was looking for a new machine was the ability to take a reasonable size of bar stock through the spindle. This particular machine can take 38mm which is plenty enough for my needs. Dealing with Walco was really easy. Uh, I'm sure, uh, like uh, many of you, I had heaps of questions beforehand and they're always pretty quick to, to get back to me. Uh, and on the odd occasion where I ask something really obscure or really awkward, they normally get back within 24 or 48 hours, which I felt was pretty good. Walker use a combination of third-party couriers and their own transport to deliver their machines, with a tendency to use their own transport for larger machines. Uh, so this was actually delivered by a Walker driver. Um, he came uh, fully equipped with all the equipment to get it from the street outside down a narrow uh, gravel alley um, and into its final position that you see here. Uh, all I had to do was just to lift it up just to get the levelling feet put on. Uh, <coughs> but otherwise uh, the lathe came as uh, as you see it just here, all set up and ready to go. Um, <coughs> the engineers at Walker fitted a DRO for me. Uh, it didn't come standard on this particular lathe, um, but it was something that I really wanted. Um, so I got them to fit it for me. Um, overall, been really, really impressed with that. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the literature that comes with the lathe. Uh, <clears throat> come, the machine comes with an operator's manual, uh, parts list, and inspection uh, test record. <clears throat> the operator's manual is very basic. Uh, there's not a, a whole lot of useful information in there. Very little in the way of diagrams. So. Um, for instance, I was changing the headstock oil um, and it just mentions a drain plug. You've kind of got to go hunting around for it. I mean, to be fair, they're fairly easy to find. Um, but in my research before I bought the lathe, I did find a Grizzly manual online that was uh, very, very helpful. Um, and it was a really good source of information. And I'll link that in the comments below. Overall, the lathe has a pretty solid feel to it. Everything feels nice and smooth. All the hand wheels operate nice and smoothly. Um, <clears throat> all the levers uh, engage quite positively. Um, <clears throat> got the speed selector hand wheels up here. So you've got your high uh, and low. Uh, they quite often just need a little jiggle of a chug just to help index the gears. But everything clicks in with a nice positive, <clears throat> positive click there. Um, <clears throat> all the other dials uh, operate nice and smoothly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, really, really pretty pleased with the, the, the quality of the lathe just there. The lathe comes supplied with a three jaw and a four jaw chuck. Um, I've only used a three jaw so far. Uh, it's been pretty good in operation, but after a couple of months, I think there's some maybe chips got inside there because uh, it's starting to get a little bit sticky. So I'll uh, maybe take that apart and, and give it a wee strip down on the service at uh, some point in, in the near future. But I'm sure that's uh, no big issue. Um, <clears throat> on the note of the accessories. The lathe comes equipped with uh, fixed and travelling steadies, face plate, uh, three and a four jaw chuck, and it comes with, uh, supplied with a toolbox with a number of change gears. One minor complaint would be with the toolbox, it's a little bit on the small side, so <clears throat> trying to actually store all the change gears in it's a bit of a challenge, and mine ended up breaking some of the catches where I'll try to force it closed. Um, it's just a minor little niggle, um, but just one of those things that could be improved. One thing the lathe did not come with was a quick change tool post. Um, for me, uh, using the DRO as well, that was really quite important. So um, <clears throat> I, I fitted this. It came with a with, with a four way tool post, um, <clears throat> and this is uh, this has been great. Um, <clears throat> really saved me a lot of time um, to swap out tools. <clears throat> <clears throat> And in the uh, DRO up here, um, <clears throat> it's got a tool library that can store, I think, about 200 tools or something like that. Uh, I've only actually got two index just now, uh, the external and internal um, cutting tools, which I use frequently. Um, so I can just switch <clears throat> between them just like that. And it, it saves me a lot of time having to 
uh, reprogram the DRO uh, every time I change out a tool. So that's a, a big time saver there. Moving on from the DRO, um, <clears> the <throat> machine also comes equipped with uh, halogen light and coolant uh, <clears throat> just here. Halogen light, uh, personally I, I don't use a huge amount. Um, I, I sometimes find it gets uh, in the way a little bit, so I tend to have it just sort of <clears throat> bent out of the way just there. Uh, the coolant I find really quite useful. Um, the capacity in the coolant tank is something like 9 litres, so it's not great. And you do find if you've got it continually running for more than about a minute, it tends to, to run out quite quickly. Um, so I'll maybe look at getting a bigger sum for that at some point. But um, uh, for now it's serving my needs uh, quite well. Um, you just need to make sure it's, uh, it's topped up. Obviously you get a bit of spillage or something like that and it does run out quite quickly. Personally, I use a coolant system on this quite a lot. Um, I do quite a lot of internal uh, drilling and boring, and I find that, especially in smaller diameter bar, I can really heat up the bar quite quickly in stainless and stuff like that. So I do use it quite a lot for that. Um, <clears throat> the biggest problem with it is very messy on this machine. Uh, and uh, another minor niggle here is uh, the <clears throat> the tray that runs around the edge of the machine. It could really do with just being just protruding it just a tiny bit more because what you tend to find is a coolant uh, sort of drips down the side of the machine just here um, and this just drips onto the edge here which then just drips straight onto the floor and it can make quite a mess so um, <clears throat> yeah something that <clears throat> would be um, that I'll maybe have to do something about in the long term. As I mentioned earlier uh, the chip pan on this particular machine is removable uh, and it's, it's quite handy actually um, you can just sort of brush all your loose chips uh, into the into the chip pan, slide it out, and then empty it uh, when it gets full. Um, the coolant all drains through here as well, um, and down at this end here, uh, the coolant all drains there, and there's um, some holes that'll, that'll then feed through into a return pipe um, back into the coolant sump. The finish on the chip pan with the paint. Uh, wasn't that good and I found a number of those holes were, were blocked up with paint and that was causing a very very slow coolant return uh, back to the sump so I just opened those out, just drilled out, um, <clears throat> redrilled the holes uh, added in a heap of new ones as well and that's really sped up the coolant return and at this end of the machine we've got the tailstock um, <clears throat> it's got like a quick release uh, clamp onto it there so it's, uh, it's uh, got a really solid filter so you can really cram that up, which you do need to do, you do need to clamp it quite hard because uh, if you're drilling, especially the large diameter drills <clears throat> it can push the tailstock back a little bit, so you do need to make that uh, make sure that's nice and tight um, I did have to adjust that a little bit out of the factory, but that was uh, that was dead simple just in case of sliding it off the end, um, <clears throat> adjusting the nut on the bottom, sliding it back on and, uh, and away you go so earlier on I chucked up this bit of bar just here, um, it's about 4 inch diameter, uh, not entirely sure what material it is, it's just something I've had kicking around the workshop for as long as I can remember and thought it might be quite useful for this video here. So we'll file the lathe up and we'll just do a couple of cuts and just, um, just see how we get on with that. <clears throat> first things first. One thing I really noticed when I got this was it, the lathe was actually a lot quieter than I expected it to be. Um, <clears throat> it's probably a little bit noisier in operation, but because it's quite a, a solid machine, it doesn't really get louder when you're cutting, whereas a mini lathe, <clears throat> it tends to have quite a high-pitched whir anyway, but you found as soon as you actually started cutting metal, uh, you used to get a lot of vibrations through the machine now, and it really caused quite a racket. And uh, this machine is actually pleasantly quiet in operation. Um, still a bit of noise, but nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. So I've gone ahead and set the lathe for 460 RPM, um, <clears throat> feed just whatever it was from the last job and we'll fire it up and we'll see how we get on.
you can see the chip breaker is not really doing its job, so I'll try just uh, bump up the feed a little bit and see if that makes a difference. I did have to go in at a slightly uh, lesser depth of cut for the higher feed there, um, but the chip breaker on the uh, carbide insert was working really well there. Um, got a pretty good surface finish there, and the machine handled it quite well. Um, <clears throat> you could hear the motor being loaded a little bit, but it wasn't uh, slowing it down or anything like that. So, so overall, just been really impressed with this machine. Um, it's done everything I've asked of it. Uh, it's uh, very little complaints. It's been faultless um, <clears throat> since since the day I got it. So, really, no complaints. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If anyone has any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them below and I'll uh, try my best to answer them if I can.